Do you know that saying about a society being judged on the way it treats its most vulnerable? Well, this report is uh, judging the province, this province, very harshly. The Ontario Ombudsman is calling for a complete overhaul of the system that is supposed to help developmentally delayed adults when they're in crisis. Good night, everyone. I'm really happy. And I'm loving my home. Alex is 26 years old. He has autism, and in this video, he's yeah. in his own bed at home. What was your favorite part of the day? Getting him home. But Alex hasn't been in that bed for some nine months. He's been shunted between hospital and hospital with no community support to help him when he's in crisis. You're actually in the hospital in North Bay with your son because there's no other bed in Ontario for him, let alone close yeah. to where you live? It's a crisis to get a bed in Ontario. No other available beds or no other beds, period. Today, after four excruciatingly long years, Ontario's Ombudsman has come out with a report called Nowhere to Turn, investigating more than 1,500 complaints about the way Ontario treats developmentally delayed adults like Alex. It took them four years to get this report released. I think there's been enough talk. When people are dying, we need um, measurable, immediate crisis planning. This lengthy report makes 60 recommendations about a systemic overhaul after hearing complaints about adults being left homeless, abused, abandoned, or inappropriately housed in hospitals and jails. Ontario, we put them in jails and psych wards, and we kill them. That's what we're doing. Honestly, I'm not over dramatizing. We don't give them the supports. So this report is hollow to me after waiting four years. Surprisingly, there are no recommendations about the controversial use of five-point restraints, a hospital practice City News has been exposing this year in a series of stories. Anne says the reason her son is now essentially living in a hospital way up in North Bay is because of the trauma from restraints that were used when he first went into a hospital closer to home nine months ago. Alex was naked and, uh, you know, as with other people for more periods of more than 24 hours, and absolutely terrified about what, what and why this was happening to him. What do you mean he was left naked? He was in five-point cold metal mechanical restraints. He couldn't go to the washroom and he urinated. He cut his clothes off. They left him urine-soaked naked in five-point restraints? Yes, at some point a um, flannel sheet, not even warm, was put on him. We're being told as parents to abandon our children at hospitals. Anne Larcade has spent her entire life fighting for her son and says this report does little to convince her that that fight is anywhere near done. When my son's life is at risk, the time is ticking for how they will lay out these measurable initiatives. And will it be in time to save one life, let alone a hundred or a thousand? I'm just like any other parent. I'm fighting for my child to live, and I'm mad. Ann Larkade says she doesn't understand why it's community and social services and not the Ministry of the Health that's in charge of the care of developmentally disabled adults. She says people like her son are essentially being treated like second-class citizens, being denied their constitutional right to health care.